Hello and welcome to this Rolls Battery Engineering Training uh, via webinar. Uh, my name is Steve Higgins. Uh, I am with uh, Rolls Battery Engineering. Uh, here's my contact information. Uh, my I'm the Technical Services Manager for Rolls Battery Engineering. Uh, I'm with Rolls Threat Battery Company. Uh, my contact information at steve at threat.com or steve at rollsbattery.com. Uh, feel free to give me a call anytime if you have any questions, uh, or you can send me an email if you have any questions about this webinar. Uh, also, um, all of the materials are currently available for download off of my Google Drive. Uh, I don't expect you to memorize this link, or you, unfortunately, you cannot click on this link at this point in time. But for the link, just send me an email, steveitsright.com. I'll be more than happy to respond to you with the link and a link to our YouTube site. Uh, of course, if you already found this, you probably already have a link to our YouTube site. So anyways, today what we're going to talk about is some tips and tricks when you're using Victron products and Rolls Surette batteries. Um, one of the things you want to be careful of um, with any kind of systems is that with the specifically about the Victron, they have this adaptive four stage charging. Uh, a lot of this is a like it's it's a lot like the the Outback silent mode. A lot of companies have done this where they're adding stages. Um, when it's when it works, if it's programmed correctly, it's it works great. But if there's little differences in the programming, or if your client or you are using the batteries uh, with a heavier depth of discharge than how it's programmed, then you're going to end up with sulfation, and that's going to turn into a, what what I call a snowball. Basically, it's going to start out a little big, a little small, and then it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, uh, you know, 12, 18, 24 months down the road, now your batteries are useless. And now you're trying to get a warranty covered on batteries that isn't really a battery problem. It's a, it's a charging problem. So uh, the point of this is there's absolutely no substitution for uh, for quarterly maintenance or doing maintenance on your batteries, especially if they're flooded lead acid batteries. If they're flooded batteries, you can take a look at your specific gravities and see if the settings are really working for your charging. Uh, for AGM batteries or gel batteries, it's a little more difficult, but you can still do a load test on the batteries um, as, just, as described in my load test uh, webinar and see if the batteries are actually coming to a full, full capacity charge. So here are the SIM system. So on this on this on this specific system, um, we've got 16 S550. So it's an 856 amp hour battery bank. There are two series parallel strings. So it's two parallel strings of uh, uh, two strings of eight batteries for a total of 16 batteries. We've got a 16 or a six kilowatt PV array on two 60 amp charge controllers, and we've got an inverter chargeable cap capable of about 120 amps of charge current. So assume testing the system settings. For the Victron inverters and the Victron products in general, the bulk absorption voltage, as long and it's got to be temperature compensated uh, with any battery. Make sure that you've got the temperature compensation set up correctly. The bulk absorption voltage is going to range between 58.8 to 60 volts. Typically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my solar array or my solar chargers closer to the 60 volt setting. And then I'm going to set my charge controller settings roughly about 59.2 to 59.6 volts. Um, uh, again, to get that, your, your, your dip switch settings on the Victron products need to be set up. And so you're, you're setting up your, your, your dip switch settings. Do not use the pre-programmed roll settings on the Victron products, because if you do, those pre-programmed pre settings are not going to, um, get the battery bank properly charged. Um, with Victron, basically that the absorption time settings are four to eight hours. Uh, unfortunately, it's not, there's not a whole lot of resolution on that. It's either four hours or eight hours. So um, uh, you need to set that up. Normally with this system, basically you're looking at a 100 amp charge source on an 856 amp hour battery bank. It should be set for right around four hours. Uh, so if the switch, the, the DS, six settings off, then the, the setting's gonna be eight hours, and you possibly could have some excessive gassing situations with that. So once you got everything programmed, basically you're done. Just like the other pro just like the other charging settings that we talked about, you're not. Um, 
you know, what you should do is you should go back and look at your, your specific gravities. If after two, three, four weeks, you're getting these readings, um, 228, 225, 230, 235, 230. And so all your, all your readings are about the same, but they're all low. Uh, what's happening here is your batteries aren't getting fully charged. So then you need to get a little more aggressive on your settings to, to, to make sure that your batteries are properly are seeing a full 100% charge. You are technically undercharging your batteries. If you leave them alone like this and you go 6, 10, 12, 18 months down the road, there is a possibility you may not be able to recover them if you, do, if you try to correct this, even with equalization charges. So it's important to make sure you catch this early. Um, Recheck that you you have the, the the proper settings, and you may need to adjust your settings or evaluate if the charging sources are charging as expected. Um, in this case, we all of our specific gravities. So we have a 1280, 1290, 1300, 1310, 1290. All your specific gravities are all high. Uh, basically, what that means is, is that your batteries are basically overcharging. Uh, that overcharging, uh, if, if unchecked, you know, 12, 18, 24 months down the road, is going to start causing problems with your battery bank. You need to make sure you go in and readjust your settings to make sure that you are not overcharging the batteries, you're not cooking them. Um, you will need to, to, to fix this situation, you will need to adjust your settings down. Well, uh, this was a short one, uh, made it quick as possible. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send me an email or give me a call. Again, my email address is steve at and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you.